What's going on everybody? So in this episode of the Modern Shed Build series, we're gonna be installing asphalt shingles on a shed roof. This video is gonna be pretty detailed. It's gonna go through how to install the drip edge, how to cut your starter strip, how to install the rows of shingles, how to install ridge flashing, all that good stuff. So skip around as you need. It's gonna be very detailed, but with that being said, let's get into the video. What's going on guys? So if you still need to frame your shed walls or your shed roof, you can check out my previous videos. But this project starts with the plywood roof decking already installed. And as you can see, I apply flashing tape to all of the plywood joints. This isn't necessary, but it's what I did. And as we install the asphalt shingles, you'll be hearing these terms a lot. So the front of the shed is referred to as the ridge. The sides of the shed roof are called the rake and the backside is called the eave. The first step in this asphalt shingle installation procedure is to install the drip edge on the back also known as the eave of the shed roof. Now, a drip edge is typically made of a non-corrosive metal, and its purpose is to direct any water runoff away from the shed. I'll link the exact drip edge I used in the description. When installing a drip edge on the eave side, I recommend that you take some snippers and create a bend just for a couple inches at the corner, and this is gonna basically create a corner that's gonna catch between the eave and the rake edge, and that way when you install the rake drip edge, it will go on top of that and prevent any water from getting behind the drip edge. So bend that corner in place, and once you get it positioned where it needs to be, tight up against that outside corner, you're gonna install nails every 12 inches on center. I'm using the rigid roofing nailer, and I'll link that in the description. I also installed a nail at the corner to keep the bent portion in place. I needed two pieces of drip edge to span the total distance, so I created that bent corner piece just like we did on the other side, and then you're gonna overlap the second piece of drip edge with the first drip edge by a minimum of six inches. Typically, you can get two pieces of drip edge to nest together pretty well by tapping it with a hammer. As you can see, I had the corner up flush, and then once everything was good and I had that six inch overlap, I nailed everything in place every 12 inches on center or so. As you can see, I have the bent portion there that looks good. And just like the other side, I'm gonna install a nail to make sure that that bent portion stays locked in place. Here's a quick preliminary look at the eave drip edge installed all along the eave side of the shed. And now we can begin installing the tar paper. Tar paper is a thin layer of waterproof material that serves as a waterproof barrier between the plywood roof decking below and the shingles above. Install your first row of tar paper so that it overhangs the eave side drip edge by around an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Make sure that the overlap is consistent all the way across. After positioning your tar paper so the desired overhang is maintained, use either staples or cap nails with a rubber head to secure the tar paper in place. Be sure to use enough nails or staples to secure the tar paper. After installing the first row of tar paper, we're gonna install the second row so that it overlaps the first row by a minimum of four inches. You wanna have this overlap so if water ever gets on top of the tar paper, it will be able to drain freely down the roof and off the shed. Continue to install row after row of tar paper, maintaining the minimum four inch overlap up the entire shed. As you install the tar paper, don't be afraid to have an overhang over the rake sides and also the ridge. You can go back later on and trim it flush to the fascia boards using a utility knife, and that is so much easier than trying to pre-measure and pre-cut your tar paper to length. After installing the tar paper so that it goes on top of the eave side drip edge, you're now going to install the drip edge over top of the tar paper on the rake sides of the shed. Take your first piece of drip edge for the rake side and position it on the back side of the shed. You wanna make sure that the rake drip edge overlaps the eave drip edge on that piece that we bent previously. Be sure to pull the drip edge in so it's flush with the fascia board and secure it every 12 inches on center. So after installing the first piece of drip edge on the rake side of the shed, we're gonna take the second piece and we wanna make sure that we cut it to a length that's gonna allow for a six inch overhang over the previously installed piece of drip edge. So after measuring that, I'm taking my snippers there and I'm cutting the drip edge along that line. And then I'm gonna position the second piece of rake drip edge on top of the first piece of rake drip edge so that I have a six inch overlap and also so that the front near the ridge is perfectly flush with the ridge fascia board as shown. Once I have everything in place, I secured it with a nail, made sure that the two pieces of rake drip edge interlocked properly, and then secured them in place every 12 inches on center. Repeat this exact process for the other rake side of the shed. 
After installing the drip edge on the eave side of the shed, then the tar paper, and then the drip edges on the rake sides of the shed, we can now begin installing the shingles. The first step in installing shingles is to install the starter strip on the eave side of the shed. Now, although you can buy pre-made starter strip, it's often a lot more economical for things like a shed where you only need a few starter strips to simply make your own. So to do this, flip a full shingle over and then cut it in half lengthwise as shown. Here I am taking another shingle and repeating the process by flipping it over, taking a utility knife and cutting the shingle in half lengthwise. Now, we're only gonna use the half of this shingle that has the adhesive backing like I'm showing here. That adhesive is gonna help to hold the shingle course that we install on top of it down in place. I needed four starter strips for this shed, so I cut the remaining two as shown. Cut approximately four inches off the first piece of starter strip so that the joints between the shingle course above and the starter strip don't line up. Position the first starter strip in place so that it overlaps the rake drip edge by around a quarter of an inch and also overlaps the eave drip edge by a quarter of an inch. After positioning the starter strip with an appropriate overhang, secure it in place with four nails. Then install the next piece of starter strip, ensuring that you have the correct overhang, and then using four nails to hold it in place. Repeat this process for the rest of the starter strip along that first row. Don't be afraid to leave an overhang of starter strip over the rake edge. We'll go back and trim that off later. So after installing the starter strip, what we're gonna do now is install our first course of shingles. So typically you want your first course of shingles to overhang your starter strip by about a quarter of an inch. And to ensure that I get a consistent quarter inch overhang, I like to establish where I'm gonna install the back of the shingle. So for these shingles, they're 13 and a quarter inches. So if I mark 13 inches from the back of the starter strip, that will mean once I install the shingle flush with that line, I'll get a quarter inch overhang. Hope that makes sense. So to install the first shingle, we're taking a full length run of shingle and we're gonna line it up so that the back of the shingle is right up against the chalk line that we established. What this is gonna mean is that we're gonna have a quarter inch overhang over the starter strip and you also wanna position the shingle so you have a quarter inch overhang over the rake side drip edge. Once you have your first shingle in the first row position, so you have the quarter inch overhang over the starter strip and a quarter inch overhang over the rake side drip edge, you're gonna install four nails into the target nail zone as shown in the figure. Continue to install the first row of shingles by positioning the back of the shingle so it's in line with the chalk line established previously, and then install four nails if you live in a standard area, or six nails if you live in a high wind area, installing the nails within the target nail zone as shown. Here I am installing the final shingle in the first row, getting it flush with the adjacent shingle and making sure it's in line with the chalk line, and then installing nails as shown. Again, the overhang is fine, we'll trim that off later. Here's a look at the first row of shingles completed. So when installing the first shingle in the second row, what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim six inches off of the length. And the reason you're gonna do this is because you want all of the joints between shingles to be staggered for each row. After trimming six inches off the first shingle in the second row, you're going to wanna position it so again, you have the quarter inch overhang over the rake side drip edge and so that the bottom of the shingle is in line with the top of the wide cutout. What I'm showing you here is how in the field, the bottom of the shingle installed above should be completely lined up with the wide cutout of the shingle below, as shown. So after positioning the first shingle in the second row so that the quarter inch overhang is maintained on the rake side drip edge, and so the bottom of the shingle is in line with the top of the wide cutout of the shingle below, you can then install your roofing nails, install four for standard applications in the target nail zone, and use six nails if you're in a high wind zone. And here I am showing you how I'm maintaining a quarter inch overhang over the rake side drip edge. So at this point, we're simply gonna continue with the installation of the second row of shingles. We're gonna butt the second shingle up against the first shingle we installed in the second row. We're gonna make sure that the bottom of the shingle is in line with the wide cutout of the shingle below. And then we're gonna drive four or five nails in the target nail zone to secure it in place, making sure that it's lined up where it needs to be. Continue to install full shingles in the second row until you make it all the way across the row. Leave any overhang and we'll trim that later. Now for the first shingle in the third row, we're gonna trim 11 inches off this time. And again, this is just to stagger the joints in between the shingles. So taking our first shingle for the third row, which has 11 inches trimmed off, we started and maintained the quarter inch overhang and we installed the shingles the same way all the way across. For the fourth row of shingles, we're gonna trim 17 inches off this time. After this fourth course, the fifth course is simply gonna use a 
full shingle again, and we're gonna repeat this process. Using a full shingle, then trimming six inches off, then trimming 11 inches off, then trimming 17 inches off, and then restarting. So repeat this process all the rest of the way up. So at this point, you have all the knowledge you need to continue to install row after row of shingles. Be sure to maintain a quarter inch overhang over the rake drip edges and continue to leave an overhang on the opposite rake side of the shed. At this point, I'll let the time lapse roll for your benefit. Feel free to skip ahead, but essentially we're following the exact same process. We're gonna be trimming the first shingle in each row according to the manufacturer's instructions and to make sure that we have a staggered joint. And then we're just gonna install the shingles all the way across each row. As you can see, I have a broom up there on the roof so I can sweep off any dirt, debris, or leaves so I have a clean surface to install my shingles on. So after cleaning off the surface, here's just a quick example of me installing a shingle from below. I'm getting it pushed up against the shingle to the left, and then I'm making sure that the bottom of the shingle is in line with the top of the wide cutout of the shingle below. Once I had it positioned where I wanted it on the left-hand side, I used a roofing nail to secure it. Then I made any adjustments necessary on the right-hand side, and once I was happy with it, I nailed it in place. I'm gonna put a few more nails in the target nail zone. And here's a quick look showing the six inch stagger between the row below. So what I'm gonna show here is the installation of the first shingle in one of the rows towards the top of the shed. And it's just more of the same. We're gonna position it so we have the quarter inch overhang over the rake drip edge. And we're just gonna lower that shingle in place so that it's in line with the top of the wide cutout of the shingle below. And then it's just as simple as nailing it in place just like we've done. Here I am showing the overhang that we're maintaining. At this point, I'm gonna to continue to install rows of shingles until we get to the ridge of the shed. There, we'll do something a little bit different, but for now, it's row after row until we get there. So this was the last row of shingles that I was able to install where I could actually nail through the target nail zone. So after installing this row, I took my ladder and I accessed the shingles from below and I used a utility knife with a hook blade to cut it flush with the fascia board on the ridge edge of the shed. So in order to cover this last row of nails, what I did was I took a bunch of asphaltic uh, roof coating and I used this as a type of adhesive and then I took another row of shingles and I installed it pretty similar to how you would install any row, but the only difference is I nailed it through the shingle as far as I could up towards the ridge and still secure it to the fascia board. Now, we're gonna have these exposed nails, but we're gonna install a piece of flashing over the corner there, which is gonna cover those nails, so it's not a big deal. So what I did, again, is I put a bunch of that asphaltic coating down, I took the shingle, I installed it in place, and then I nailed it as far up towards the front of the shed as I possibly could, while still contacting the wooden fascia board. Then, as you can see, I'm taking some of that asphaltic coating and I'm putting it over the nail heads and spreading it out with my finger, just as an additional layer of water protection. So here I am continuing down the last row. Again, I'm installing a copious amount of this asphaltic coating, which I'm kind of using as an adhesive and then I'm taking a full row of shingles, I'm installing it in place so that the bottom of that shingle row is still flush with the top of the wide cutout of the shingles below. And then I'm going back and I'm covering all the nail heads with that asphaltic coating. After completing the last row on the shed, I went down to the underside of the shed and I scored off the excess with a utility knife so that it was flush with the fascia board as you're seeing right now. After completing this step, it's time to install the ridge flashing, which will cover up that last row. So what I'm showing you here is this 90 degree ridge flashing that's gonna go over the last row of shingles and also the fascia board on the front. So you can buy these either in the aluminum color or you can buy them black. Um, they're hard to find in black sometimes, but you can always paint them. So what I'm doing is I'm applying two beads of this asphaltic coating. And I'm doing this on both sides of the piece of ridge flashing. This asphaltic coating will help to adhere the ridge flashing to the shed, and it also will be a waterproofing agent. Continue to apply this asphaltic coating on both sides of the ridge flashing all the way down the entire length. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to take your ridge flashing with the asphaltic coating already applied to the backside, and you're gonna to wanna to position it in place on the ridge of the roof. 
As you can see, this piece of angled ridge flashing is going to overlap and cover the nails that we used to install that last row of shingles. And what we're going to do on the left hand side is you want to position that ridge flashing so that it overlaps the drip edge. You want to make sure that it covers the drip edge on the rake side so that any water can't get behind the drip edge on the rake side. Once you have a position in place and have the front side flush against the fascia board, you're gonna nail it every 12 inches on center, attaching it securely to the sheathing and hopefully the two by six fascia board below. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you apply nails every 12 inches on center to secure this piece of ridge flashing. And we're gonna do this all the way till the end of that one piece of ridge flashing. After installing nails every 12 inches on center for the first piece of ridge flashing, you're gonna wanna take a little bit more of that asphaltic coating and apply it to the nail heads used to secure the ridge flashing to the shed. This is gonna fully waterproof all of those nail head connections and make sure your roof never leaks, or hopefully never. Continue to apply asphaltic coating to all of the nail heads used to secure the ridge flashing to the shed roof. Use your finger to spread it around and make sure that you fill all of the voids around the nail head. So unfortunately, I couldn't buy a piece of ridge flashing that spanned the entire length of the shed. So I have to apply a partial piece on the other side of the shed. So what I did is I applied a good bit of asphaltic coating to the previously installed ridge flashing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure so I have at least a minimum of about a six inch overlap between the first piece of ridge flashing and the second piece that I'm applying. Once I had that six inch overlap, I went to the other side with some snippers and I cut it so that it was flush with the drip edge. If anything, you wanna have the ridge flashing a little bit further extending than the drip edge, just to make sure that no water will ever get behind the drip edge on the rake edge. After cutting it to size, you're simply gonna apply some more asphaltic coating underneath, which I didn't show. And once you have it in place, you're gonna use nails to secure it to the shed. For this smaller piece of ridge flashing, I nailed it to the shed every eight inches on center or so. And then after applying nails all the way across as far over as I could go, I took my asphaltic coating and I applied it to the nail heads all the way across. Again, the purpose of this coating is to seal the nail heads, fully waterproofing that ridge flashing installation. So after installing the ridge flashing, we're gonna go back and we're gonna trim off any of the excess shingles that's overhanging the rake side of the shed. Next up, you wanna mark a quarter inches over from the drip edge on the rake edge, and then you're gonna snap a chalk line so you know where to trim the overhanging shingles. So here I am establishing the chalk line, which will leave me with a quarter inch overhang over the rake drip edge, and I couldn't show myself snapping it, but you're gonna snap that along the top of the shingles. Then go back with a hook blade on your utility knife and trim all of the excess off. You can also use some heavy duty snippers to cut off the overhanging shingles, but this is not recommended. I think a utility blade is the best way to go. After trimming off any of the overhanging shingles, your shed roof asphalt shingle installation is now complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you like DIY content like this. In the next video, we're gonna be building a shed ramp, so hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when that video drops. Thanks again for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.